So this side is showing you this side, this is that's just the camera. I figured they didn't want to see the camera, but it would be helpful to have a little picture of the camera on this side. And then I'm gonna move the audio here until we're ready to.
We're working on a minor technical difficulty. We are good. good to go. Okay, we're good to go. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out to the town hall. This is the third um, town hall that the city's hosting this year, and this one's going to be on parks and recreation. So I appreciate you guys taking time out of your evening, whether you're here in person or attending virtually through Zoom. So with that, I would like to introduce our mayor, Mayor Zolpansky, and she'll give you an introduction and welcome. Thank you, Dan. Can everyone hear me okay? All right. Uh, welcome to everyone live and in person here at our Parks headquarters. Isn't this a beautiful building? This building was built in 1927 and served first as a junior high, and then it served as our town, or as our city hall for many years before we uh, built our new city hall in 1993. So I love this gym. I love the windows. I love the atmosphere here. Part of my goal as mayor is to bring government close to the people and to meet our residents where you live and experience government services. So I'm very pleased to come to this beautiful gymnasium. I love the sound of the hard, hardwood floor. And if anybody needs uh, me to speak louder so that you can hear over our atmosphere here tonight, just raise your hand and let me know. I'm Mayor Monica Zoltansky, and this is our third town hall of my administration. Our first one was on public safety. Our second one was on water conservation and our water rate structure. And tonight we're so pleased to showcase the many features of our Parks and Recreation Department. Our Parks and Rec Department is uh, led by Dan Medina as our Parks Director. And there's 45, uh, excuse me, 52 full-time employees and our ranks swell with, in, during the summertime with over 245 seasonal and part-time employees. So it is a big department and it reaches every corner of our city. Every neighborhood loves parks and trails. And whenever we survey residents, the one thing that we hear about the best part of living in Sandy is our beautiful location and the proximity we have to the canyons and how well, our, how well maintained our parks and rec uh, trails and facilities are. Of course, we have the, gol the golf course, Delta Canyon Rec Center, our many pocket parks on uh, some of I think the, the resident favorites are Lone Peak Park, Hidden Valley Park, and many others uh, throughout the neighborhood. So our parks crew does an amazing job at keeping our parks safe and clean for all of us to enjoy. One of the goals of tonight's conversation is to let you know what we're doing in parks and also uh, what's coming up. Decisions that the City Council will be facing, of course, on Alta Canyon Sports Center, uh, reinvesting in that and the future of the Rec Center and just to have a, an exchange to talk about all the different aspects of the parks department. I made a few talking points uh, because never fails when I sit down, I think, oh, I should have said one more thing. Um, so we've seen through the pandemic how important our parks and open spaces are. As a community, they're a safe place to come together to enjoy our community's beauty and also to socialize. Mm -hmm. And an important aspect of what we do in our parks department is we provide recreation opportunities to people, regardless of their income levels, regardless of where they live, there's plenty of opportunity for fun right here in Sandy. The uh, Parks Department also creates events and experiences that are so important to our identity as a community. We have the 4th of July parade, the fireworks of course, and a whole, a whole a schedule of events in the, in the summertime. The balloon festival, 
be at Christmas time, the Light Karen's District food truck night on Mondays is starting soon. Trunk or treat is extremely popular. And our upcoming Heritage Days Festival right here in historic Sandy will be held September 10th. And a new aspect to that festival this year will be the return of the horse parade. So everybody grab your cowboy hat and get ready for that September 10th. I also wish to welcome people who are tuning in tonight online. We have this available by Zoom and also available uh, on our city social media channels on our Facebook page is being live streamed. So if you have questions and you wish to interact with uh, anybody who's presenting tonight or ask me anyone questions, please do so through the Zoom feature. Use the raise hand feature on the Zoom. And we have people here who will be monitoring the chat in the Zoom and also the Q&A portion. So please participate and feel free to participate and know your voice will be heard whether you're here in person or participating online. So let's see. I think I've got everything. Oh, I cannot start without thanking the people who make this town hall possible. There's some very key essential staff present here tonight. Just in general, if you're city staff, can you raise your hand so people can see in the room if you're here with the city? Um, Kim Bell is then the prime organizer of the town hall series. Of course, Dan Medina, our parks director, along with Todd AC, Jetta Moreau, Kevin Bybee, Charlie Menard, Louise Stillian, Mitch Stone, Elenia Seville, Tara Larson, and our IT guru, Nick Stenquist. And uh, Justin is capturing this in the back, uh, Justin Adams on the back for communications. So uh, tonight we have people will be discussing Alta Canyon Rec Center, our city recreation programs, River Oaks Golf Course, the Parks Pavilion Rentals, rules on animals in the city park. And this is really your opportunity to ask questions. So. I'll stop doing the talking and I'm here to listen uh, to you and listen and address your concerns tonight. So with that, I'll turn it back to Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, Parks and Recreation, what do we do? So our goal is to enhance your life, you know, whether that's mentally, physically, or the environment that we provide for you guys with our parks and open space, um, you know, and our program. So we want you guys to make sure that you guys are enjoying life in this community. Uh, roads are important, place is important, but if you don't have things to do and activities to enjoy, your life's gonna be pretty dull. So that's what we do. We do that by providing you guys with activities, programs, events, and stuff for you to do within the community. So we're here to tell you about that. Um, and then one of the other things that we look at is how do we communicate to you through web page and um, social media, brochures, those types of events. Um, not events, but modes of communication. So one of the things that we wanna do with this is we're gonna start off with a uh, poll or a survey. Um, with your text phone. So break out your tech, your uh, cell phones for a minute and we're going to switch that over and we're going to have Jetta Marriott lead you in a presentation on that. Start. <laughs> See, I, I always have one more thing to say. I, I want to introduce our council members who are here in attendance tonight. Council member Brooke D'Souza, Cindy Sharkey, and Scott Earl. So thank you so much for attending council members. Thanks. Okay, so as you saw on the screen, if you guys will get your phones out and open up your text messaging, we need you to text the word Sandy. It doesn't have to be in all capitals, just text the word Sandy. And where you would put the phone number, put 22333 and push send. You should get a notification back to you that you're registered to participate in our poll. Two, two, three, three, three. So text the word Sandy in the body to the number two, two, three, three, three. And those of you who are participating online via Zoom, you also can participate in this. So it does work online over the internet. So number one, first of all, we want to hear how did you hear about this town hall meeting? You're gonna pick one. So in the body of your text message now, 
type the letter that corresponds with the answer that fits best for you. So if you heard about this on the Sandy City website, you're going to type A in the body of your text message and send it. And this does show live results. So it looks like right now, majority of people are hearing about this via other means, which we're interested to know. If you look up on the screen up here, it says total results 21. So 21 people have answered so far. We're just gonna wait till that number holds steady for a second and we'll move on to the next question. Okay, anyone in here still answering? Raise your hand. Okay, we'll wait for just a second. Okay, I'm seeing more eyes. Does everyone answer that wants to? Okay, awesome. Sandy City social media looks like the majority of people heard from us. Good to know. <laughs> Next is similar, but, um, oh no, that's the next one, sorry. What was your top motivation for attending this town hall? Why did you choose to participate tonight? Alta Canyons winning the race. <laughs> some other people, hopefully you'll speak up when we've got some Q&A time. A few people to ask questions, that's great. Lots of people to hear about what we're doing. That's awesome, that's what we're here for. Okay, anyone still answering? In the future, how would you prefer to receive news and or updates from Sandy Parks and Rec? So pick your top two. Um, I know there's lots of avenues for us to communicate with you. Um, so pick two. So I think you have to send them in separate text messages. So text in A or B, um, and then for your next one, send in another text message. Email. Everyone wants an email. Can handle that, I think. Okay. Give it just one more second. Anyone still answering? Hopefully you guys can see this in the back. You should be able to see it on Zoom, which is fine. Um, but which of the following have you or an immediate family member done in the last year with us? And for this one, you can choose all that apply. Just a minute to read through all the answers. Looks like everybody has visited a park. Maybe I should put a question up there that says, which have you, which have you not done? All right, lots of people in parks, lots of people at community events, it's perfect. Anyone still answering? Have you ever heard about Sandy Beautification Day? For those of you answering A, that you haven't, tell me more. Charlie is going to tell you more in just a minute.
Looks like a bunch of people have participated. That is awesome. You guys are getting faster at this. Which of these services have you or a family member utilized at the Sandy Senior Center? Notice that option D says that you haven't utilized these services yet. <laughs> I appreciate having everyone here in the room because everyone looks up when they're done and then I know who's still looking. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Kevin's going to tell us a little bit more about the Senior Center in just a minute also. Which of the following have you or a family member participated in at River Oaks Golf Course? And this is another one that you can choose all that apply. Lots of people haven't participated yet at the golf course, which is going to tell you a little bit more about it in just a few minutes. I'll get you down there. Okay. Anyone still working? Pretty sure this is the last one. Which of the following trails have you or a family member utilized? You can choose all that apply again. While you guys are finishing this up, this is just interesting information for us to know, kind of helps us get a feel for the people who are here. Um, uh, and the things that we can maybe spend a little bit more time on. Um, so, and it also, it's really fun to just see everybody's answers on the screen live as they're coming in. So um, with that, I will turn the time over to Charlie Moore with the Parks Department. Good evening. I'm Charlie Millard and I've been with Sandy for 24 years now. Um, I'll be talking about our parks division and what we do. We have 26 full-time staff and we hire up to 45 seasonals during the summer. All our staff is very dedicated and they work very hard day in and day out. We've had some challenges this past couple of years when everything closed down and uh, the schools were out, our uh, parks got a lot busier. Um, they were very heavily used and everybody really pulled together, worked as a team to overcome these challenges and make it nice and safe. Um, when it comes to our team, safety always comes first. Not only safety for ourselves when we're at work, but safety for the park patrons and the residents that use our parks. You can see up here that we have a lot of professional people with a lot of certifications in different areas. They range from certified pole operators all the way to arborists and pesticide applicators. Um, we have many parks and sites that we maintain. We split up into different crews to do different jobs. Our grounds crew, they work on the uh, grounds maintenance in our parks. They do all the mowing, the trimming, the edging, fertilizing. 
Our irrigation crew works on getting water out at all our site, sites, keeping them healthy and alive. They do um, repairs on the system and lots of zone checks to make sure everything's working properly. Our forestry and trails crew, they take care of all the trees. They plant trees, they prune trees and also remove them. Um, they keep them healthy from disease and getting infested with insects. And we have 91 miles of trails, 92 miles of trails that we take care of. And they do a great job keeping everything safe and up to par there. Our sports field crew, they go out and prep all the ball fields, paint all the soccer fields and take care of um, getting everything ready for our recreation all the games and practices. And we also have our facilities crew and they take care of our indoor and outdoor reservations. They clean all the restrooms, they perform graffiti removal, they do all the electrical, the signs and fencing in our parks. And we also have two awesome police officers that patrol our parks and they, uh, it's been great since they've come aboard the past couple years. They keep our parks and trails safe, especially after hours. Um, these are the sites that require a little bit more maintenance than our regular parks. Um, the set, in the cemetery, we try to provide a high level of service. Um, we average one to two burials per week. On a busy week, we could go all the way up to four or one a day. A good example is our splash pad. Um, we can't just turn it on and let it run for the day. We have employees that go up there and they clean filters, they check all the equipment, make sure everything is safe. And then it doesn't end there in the morning. They, they keep going up to the site and they check the quality of the water to make sure that's okay so our users don't get sick from the water. We do the setup and take down for special events. We provide staffing at those events as well, and you'll hear about those a little bit later. Um, one big event that we have coming up is our Sandy Beautification Day. That's on May 14th this year. Um, you can go online to view the project list and we have a big QR code right over here. You can scan, it'll take you right to it. Um, we plant trees, we plant flowers. We have lots of projects that you can volunteer for. And it's a great opportunity to be involved with the community. These are some of the projects that we have going on right now. We're installing pickleball courts at Crescent Park. We're replacing the tennis courts at Storm Mountain Park. We are installing workout stations at Flatiron Park. This will be on the upper loop along the jogging path. Instead of just walking or jogging, you'll have the option of stopping at different stations to stretch out and work out on equipment. Um, we're also replacing the playground at Willow Creek Park. That will be installed in July. It starts in June and will take about a month. And our Bell Canyon Preservation Trailhead is going to be complete soon. That should be open this summer. We also are converting the LED, or we're converting our lights to LED lighting, and this will help with conservation, saving energy. How should people sign up for Beautification Day? Oh, to sign up for Beautification Day, when you go online and see the project list, there's an opportunity that you can click on an, another site and then it, you can sign up online or you can call me at the office and I can get you signed up as well. What do you do? What, what do you sign up? Just, Just to volunteer for the project day. 
Yes. And they, you know, that water, you decide there, is there enough water to make it through? I guess if, if, if you don't, you just shut it off. Yes. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to talk about right now is water conservation. Um, we work very hard to conserve water. We have uh, computerized irrigation controllers that really help us out a lot. We're installing the master valves and the flow meters right now, and that helps us to detect leaks. It alerts us right away, and that way we avoid wasting water. Um, last year with the drought, we reduced our water usage. We really cut back on our streetscapes, on the curb strips and the perimeters of our parks. We let the uh, grass stress and we tried to keep the trees as healthy as we could. Um, we also cut back on our sports field, but we kept a real close eye on those because we still have to keep our sports field safe for all the recreation programs that go on those. Um, we're using secondary water at Lone Peak and at Crescent Park. And that's all I have. I'll turn the time over to Kevin Bybee. Thank you, Charlie. Um, I'd like to give kudos to the Parks Department. They um, work hard. They're easy to work with, and plus we get to give them work to do. This recreation uh, takes a toll on the fields. Just to give you an idea, we have um, over 200 soccer games, um, over 100 softball games every week. So you can just imagine the wear and tear on the field. Um, my name is Kevin Bybee. I'm the recreation manager. I've been with the city for 20 years and I am excited to be here. And you may wonder why. Well, the why is because I love recreation. So I can talk to you about something that I love. Um, I'll back up what the mayor said earlier that uh, our parks are um, to die for. Um, part of my responsibility is to schedule reservations, um, help leagues find fields to, to play on. And I have to turn a lot of people away, probably two or three every week because we don't have the, the space. But there's a reason why they want to come here, and that's because of how well maintained they are. Um, I'm going to start off with the first slide here. I have a staff six full time when we're fully staffed. As you can see, we're missing someone. Um, we're hoping to fill that position next week. Um, Macy, she has been with the city for about three and a half years. Um, Keaton, almost three years and Laura one year and Scott a little more than 15 years. Um, the recreation staff and, and Keaton, they're young, energetic. They do an awesome job and they make me feel young. <laughs> so uh, I have about 50 years of participating to organizing, to running, to being an administrator of parks, or excuse me, of recreation. And I don't regret being a part of it at all. It's, it's a passion of mine. Um, another important slide that you'll see now kind of tells you who else is part of the, uh, the wheel. The spokes that help us uh, is our administrative staff. So I think they deserve some credit for the help and their hard work. Um, uh, I forgot to mention, we have around 50 to 75, what we call seasonal staff, ranging from the age of 14 all the way up to, I don't want to disclose the oldest, um, but they're in their 80s. Um, we're always looking, we always need officials 
scorekeepers. So now hiring the QR code, you can see what's available. Um, unfortunately, that's probably the biggest um, obstacle that we have to overcome is finding people that can work or that want to work. Okay, um, what do we do? Well, we get to program for the youth of Sandy City and the adults. Um, like I mentioned, it's fun. My staff works hard and they care about your kids. Um, youth programs, you can see from the, the list that uh, we provide team sports, individual sports, camps, clinics, and uh, tournaments and to even lessons. Just to kind of give you an idea of how many kids ranging from uh, four years old to 16, 17, we have 2,060 kids playing soccer. And that's only Sandy Recreation. If you throw in Draper, the comp soccer leagues, I think at one time we were over 5,000 kids that live around Sandy that participate. Um, our adult programs, our main one is adult softball. We have over 200 teams that have registered getting ready to play April 11th. Um, so that's that's a lot of a lot of people that spend money for dinner or after the games or before. Um, the uh, next slide is just kind of give you an idea of what some of the new programs we're trying. We would love to offer more programs if we had more resources, especially indoors um, and, and time and staff. But with being hard to hire people that are that can work, we try to partnership with a lot of different organizations to help provide more opportunities for the youth and adults in Sandy. Okay. Um, by the numbers, I wanted to point out what COVID has done for recreation. And so this is my opinion is it's done very little to hurt it. It's actually made people realize how important being outdoors is. As you can see, our numbers really haven't gone down much during the COVID period. Um, some of the reasons why the numbers were lower during COVID is restrictions that we had to place to keep a safe environment. Um, so one thing I mentioned that we offer camps, we offer or have scholarships and um, waivers are available. We kind of go by the, uh, the school district's lunch policy. So I actually have a soccer camp scholarship to provide somebody. So if you know anybody, any of the kid, youth that uh, would like to attend a soccer camp first week of June, just uh, let me know and we can get that person registered. Okay. Um, community events, another fun area of part of my responsibility. Um, we try to provide as many community events as we can within the budget allotted. Um, I think most people know about the Bloom Festival and 4th of July. And one thing is the food truck night that's gonna start on April 4th up at the amphitheater park. And that'll be the first night. And we're trying to provide an activity once a month at least to go along with that. So stay tuned and check that out. It's gonna be, that'll be a good addition to it. Um, movie nights, awesome. Um, we try to have good family movies. Okay. 
then the last part is the uh, Sandy Senior Center, which I don't know how many are familiar with it, but it's a unique situation. The city owns the facility and the programming comes from Salt Lake County Aging Services. So I'm the, one of the liaisons with them and helping them uh, achieve their goals. They do all the programming. We help provide transportation to and from the center. And that's usually starts around eight o'clock in the morning. And depending on the route and where you live, you get picked up anywhere from eight to 9.30. And then the bus brings everybody home at one o'clock. So that needs to happen two days in advance so the driver can make sure it's a safe location to pick you up. Um, they also have a bunch program, 11.30 to 12.15 every day. And they ask for a donation of $3, but if you can't afford it, um, then you won't be denied any food. Um, a lot of programs. Um, well, I need to make sure you didn't think they were strangling the uh, lady up there. Um, the, the picture is illustrating that there's lessons like uh, how to protect yourself, how to get away from somebody, computer classes, um, arts, um, pottery. I mean, there's just so much for you to do. And it's for the community of Sandy at 60 plus. Um, but what's also neat is you can volunteer. They rely heavily on volunteers. You don't have to necessarily be 60 to volunteer. Um, if you enjoy being around our uh, older population, I'm sure the center would love to have you help. Um, that's what I have and appreciate your time. I'll turn it over to Al Canyon, Lois Stillian. Thank you. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm Lois Stillian. I'm with Alta Canyon Sports Center. I've been with them for about 12 years. Uh, I was the aquatics and program coordinator for majority of that time. And it's been within the last year that I've become the center manager. So I'm learning all sorts of new fun things. <laughs> but um, Alta Canyon wouldn't be possible without my incredible team. So starting off with Sam, she's our front desk attendant. Uh, Manager coordinates all of our memberships, our snack bar, uh, also manages all of our social media, as well as a lot of our marketing. Um, she oversees our website. So if you want to check out our website, there's a QR code over there. Uh, we have Tia Hughes, who oversees all of the child care programming uh, from our summer camps, kinder camps, all the way to our year round before and after school and our preschool. We provide a lot of child care and she manages all of it. Um, Andrew Benson and Josh Taylor are our facilities maintenance crew. They literally are holding Alta Canyon together with all the sticks and glue and tape and everything we need to keep us going every single day. Currently they are mucking out the pool. So if you've ever seen our pool in the winter, it's, a, it's gross. So they're in the throes of doing that. Um, our newest member is Jeremiah Sandberg. He just started with us in September. Uh, we're excited to welcome him to our aquatics team. Um, he oversees all anything and everything aquatics as well as some of our year round programs like karate, fitness, personal training, um, and all of those fun things. We also wouldn't be able to do any of the programming without our temp seasonal staff. We have we try to hire at least 125, if not more, for to just get us through the year and through summer. So cross our fingers. There's a hiring thing over there, so check it out. <laughs> um, uh, if you knew, so Alta Canyon opened, they had their grand opening July 2nd, 1984. We had the state of the art of the 80s back then. We had all of our racquetball courts going, they were full. Uh, some of you may remember jazzercise or some of the fitness programs, weightlifting, uh, kayaking was really big as we're going through some of our old documentation, uh, definitely tumbling and dance were scenes. 
uh, that were super popular in 1984. I was two, <laughs> like for the record. <laughs> Um, flash or fast forward 38 years later to today, not much has changed as far as Alta Canyon is concerned and the structure of Alta Canyon, the outside, uh, the skeleton, the bones, everything is almost identical, including the pool. Uh, what has changed is a lot of the purpose of what's been inside. We've rearranged rooms, we've repurposed office spaces, we've created classrooms, we've created more space for more cardio and equipment and bikes and all anything and everything, every square inch of that building, we have literally tried to squeeze out as much space as possible by rearranging. Um, one of the, uh, anybody can come to Alta Canyon. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to be part of the resident special tax district, uh, anything like that. Anybody can come. You can come and pay the daily fee. You can come use the pool, cardio rooms, weight rooms, anything you want, really. Um, we offer annual memberships as well as summer memberships. Uh, if you've never been to Alta Canyon, we do offer a five-day free trial that you can come and test out and try everything uh, from fitness classes to spin room uh, to spinning to um, all of the aquatics amenities as well. One of the biggest things we have with Alta Canyon Sports Center is our programming. Uh, two of the biggest ones are obviously like the aquatics programming and the child care. With aquatics, our pool is open basically from six in the morning until 10 o'clock at night and every single minute is programmed out uh, from swimming lessons to diving to party rentals, um, our, ACE, our own in-house ACES swim team, uh, you name it, we have it in aquatics. And if you can find it, even water aerobics, like we got water aerobics in there. Those are some of our biggest classes um, and everything. Uh, another big facet is the child care programming. We, we oversee over 150 kids in the summer. We give them a place to come and recreate and go swimming and play outdoors and be active and not just stuck in a classroom all summer or in your houses playing video games all summer. So we do a lot of that. We also run a before and after school year round as well as a preschool. Um, some of our additional programming that we do is our fitness classes, our personal training. Um, we do contract out some things such as tumbling and dance, karate and uh, Lego classes. Some of that stuff like we still, we've done since the eighties and we continue to do it because it's just part of recreating. Um, some of the special events that we have are the I Can Try. We try every um, every month to try and host some sort of special fitness event uh, from Fitness in the Dark or a Zumba party. Uh, we also do little fun things like save the turkey for every workout. You get a feather and you have to disguise your turkey so he doesn't get eaten at Thanksgiving. Um, and then one of the family favorite events that we do at the, to kind of cap off the end of our summer is the Dippin' Dogs. So that one's really fun. Even if you don't have a dog, come and watch. It's always a good time. Um, oh, <laughs> like many gyms and fitness uh, centers, we were not immune to COVID. You can see by our participation numbers, we really took a hit in 2020 and 2021. Um, we worked so hard, my team and all of us worked so hard to try and provide as much programming and uh, activities as humanly possible. Uh, we wanted to maintain that safe environment that we've always maintained. And I think um, as far as I'm concerned and my staff, we blew it out of the water. We went above and beyond anything that I think was expected. Um, we work really, really hard up there to try and provide all of the uh, activities and amenities that you want in your community rec center. And we will continue to try and do all of those things. Um, but that's all I have, so. Mitch with River Oaks. My name is Mitch Dom. Um, run the golf course. I want to thank everyone for coming. First slide up here should be the employees. You have me, you have Matt Hyde, second in. He's the uh, clubhouse manager. And next to him is Skylar Duran, who thank you for showing up tonight to support us. 
He's the North Range Manager, and he also uh, is the tournament director. Um, we all work really hard together so that um, the course is in really good shape, and everyone who comes and plays there gets excellent customer service, and they leave there having a good time. I also want to say between the two departments, uh, grounds and the shop, we hire anywhere from 10 to 20-ish temp seasons. So we're actually looking for people as well. Okay, so Sandy City purchased River Oaks in 2002, and then they built the clubhouse the next year in 2003. And like everyone else, we not like everyone else, we really lucked out during COVID. It all flourished during that time. It's a place where you could go out and be outdoors, social distance while you were playing, and you could, um, uh, uh, anyway, you got outdoors, fresh air, and you'd be able to social distance with people. Pre-COVID, on our tea sheet, we sold 67% of the tea times, which means 67% of what we could sell, we sold out of the 100%. Now it's over 90%. So golf people really like to play out, uh, go out like golf. And I have a story here. Uh, Thursday, I was working behind the desk for a bit, and I got a phone call that someone wanted to book a tea time for Saturday. And I looked and I said, oh my, I'm sorry, but the first tea diaping I can give you is Monday. So that's how busy it is down there. It's, they're loving it and coming down. We have three golf leagues that we run at River Oaks. First is ladies and then co-ed. And that's hosted on Monday night. That starts April 4th. And it goes every Monday through October, Tuesdays, um, is men's league that started in March 8th and that'll run through October and then we have a big banquet and a Halloween kind of a I don't know what we call it but we make the course really hard and tee off backwards and holes this big and it's really fun then we have a year in banquet after that and then we also uh, host three different leagues we have American Express company we have Jordan School District, and then we have a clean and sober league. It's called Good Time Golf, and that's on Wednesday. And next one. Okay, our programs. So I'm going to brag just for a sec. We have the best junior golf program in the state of Utah. It's ran, it's called In Motion Junior Golf. It's ran by Todd Tanner and Stacy Jones. It's uh, for boys and girls ages three to eighteen. Um, you could have camps in the fall, spring, summer, and even the winter. You could do it all year round. It's, they're, they're just doing a wonderful job. And we also have one of the best teachers in the state. His name's Ryan Holt, and he's won PGA Teacher of the Year before. And they're just a huge asset to both the city and River Oaks. And we have a great banquet facility. It seats 150 people, 150 people indoors or 500 people indoor, outdoor for like an open house, you know, wedding, open house, whatever. Um, it's good for family celebrations, weddings, luncheons, business meetings, and then lunch after the golf tournament because everyone plays the golf and then they go eat lunch. And uh, I want to tell you about a project we're working on in spring that goes out to bid, I believe, April 4th. Uh, we have a wedding tent in back that gets used a lot. And a lot of times there'll be three and four weddings over the winter or the summer in a week. And it might rain or the tent stays up and the grass doesn't grow. So it gets really muddy and it's a constant struggle. So we're going to pour a concrete pad below and uh, it'll be really good for the city and for all the events out there. You can eat outside and it's going to be really good. All the tournaments can eat out there if they want. So we're excited for that. And 135 acres, River Oaks is 135 acres total. 85 acres is the turf part of it. And one thing we did this week, uh, we installed a pump, a brand new pump that uh, pumps the water out of the well into the pond. And then we go out to the irrigation. We fired up today. And it's going to be way more efficient than our 25-year-old pump. So that's all I have. And I want to thank everyone for coming.
Thank you, Mitch. Okay, um, so next we're going to talk about Alpha Canyon, the future of Alpha Canyon, what we're looking at doing with it. So the district, I'm going to give you a little history lesson on it. The district was formed in 1981. Uh, it went out to a vote citywide, um, all four of the quadrants. The, the uh, district kind of got voted down, but Alta Canyon really district, that quadrant of the city, they really wanted this district. They wanted this rec center, they wanted parks. So the district was formed. Um, they hopped into it right away. They constructed the rec center, uh, which was done a couple of years later in 1984. Considering design time, getting the district started up and established in that, they built about four parks too. Those parks then got turned over to the city for general use um, for all citizens. So a lot of people wondered why Alpha Canyon got all these parks first. And that's because they formed this district and they built all these parks as part of their district. And then um, in 2002, the city uh, worked with the board at Alpha Canyon or the elected officials for the Alpha Canyon district. We formed an interlocal agreement with them. At that point, the city took over the day-to-day -day operations of the uh, recreation district. So um, with the board as overseeing for policy and those types of things. And then um, in 2008, we were going to expand the recreation center. We had the plans drawn up, we went out to bid and everything. And that was right when the recession hit. And the city leaders and the board made a decision that we're not going to build a rec center in the middle of this recession. We don't know how hard it's going to hit. We didn't want to lay off employees. So we put the brakes on building the rec center. So it's been sitting out there all this time and everybody's been wanting to get this rec center moving again. So that brings us up to now. And then what we're looking at is the concerns that we have. Now, these concerns, they really haven't changed. Um, it's still the same issues that we had in 2008. It's, you know, the space issue, the lack of amenities. You know, people want an indoor jogging path. We don't have one. Um, they want indoor swimming pool. We don't have that. Um, you know, and then things that are the original equipment in there, the pool boiler, for example, that heats the swimming pool. That's the original boiler that was put in that building back in uh, 1984. So um, it's a 38 year old boiler. Every year, the, the uh, facility guys are crossing their fingers that that thing will light up <laughs> and then we don't have to replace it. So uh, it's, it's one of those things. So there are some improvements that need to happen to the center no matter what. Um, and then as far as the future is concerned. So what about the future of the center and uh, the district? These are all questions that we're looking to answer right now. Um, and we've been talking about it over the last couple of years. We've had some neighborhood meetings and um, we had uh, AECOM um, come in and do a study. So, uh, and they completed that study. So for those of you that are here, the back board back there, there's two boards that show four options for what AECOC came up with in their concepts. If you want to look at the full report, um, there's a QR code on that that'll take you to the link, or you can go to Sandy City uh, webpage, go to the Alta Canyon part of the webpage, and there's a section in there that talks about that too. And along with that, you will also see the council has established a timeline for what they want to do on how to tackle this uh, problem that we've got um, in that. So the other thing that we are looking for is um, people to serve on a special advisory committee because the council made the decision to dissolve the, electric, the elected board that was there. Um, so now in essence, the council is the board. The council established it, the special district, they're in charge of the special district. So. Now they're talking about what do we do with that district? Do we keep it the same size? Do we expand it? Do we dissolve it completely? So these are some of the things that are gonna be happening um, in the near future. And with that, 
actually tomorrow night is the first item that's going to be hitting on that um, at the city council. It's item number four on the council meeting district if you're interested in that. And that's going to be tackling what are they going to do with the special services district? So they're going to have that first conversation on that. Um, the next two items that they've got planned, it's tentatively in the council agenda schedules, but it hasn't been firmed up date wise yet. Otherwise, I'd give it to you now. Um, but how should we finance the major improvements if we go that route? Um, you know, do we use buildings? Do we use um, a bond? Do we use fees? How are we going to handle funding that way? And then the other item they're going to talk about at another time too is what level do we want the center to be? Do we want it to have the X number of facilities? Do we want it to have a lesser number of facilities? So that's kind of what some of those concepts and that AECOM study gives them some information on that, but they've got to make those final decisions on that. So, um, and like I said, that uh, timeline, if you're interested in that timeline is available on the city's web page. So um, with that, we're going to move into questions. Um, so this is the question session part. So for those of you that are virtual, if you will use the raise hand feature and uh, raise your hand and we'll take a couple questions here in the audience and then we'll start mixing the ones that are virtual and the ones that are in the audience. So um, we'll start that way. Does anyone in the audience have any questions? Mayor, go ahead. Tomorrow night is preferred options for Alta Canyon, not the financing aspect of it. It's tomorrow night's discussion. Tomorrow is the preferred options. I think that's what I have. Okay. I might have been flipped that around this way. Yes. What's happening to this building? Uh, I believe your question was what's happening to this building? We don't know that yet. We are working on a study to that. AECOM actually won that study too. They are looking at different options, whether it be like a food bank building, a community type center, or arts. Um, one thing that would happen is uh, the uh, community arts need the home. And um, they've got the amphitheater, but that's not a year round facility. They need a place to hold practices and that type of stuff. So that's another thing that's being looked at. Do we have a question online? Yeah, I've. Uh, my name is John Bennett. I've got uh, some questions on trail maintenance. We've. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the spring and summer and fall running the trails up around Belt Canyon and some of the other trails. And um, frankly, I have to duck a lot of the times. The vegetation grows out over the trails, and even on the Belt Canyon Trail, some of the. Uh, like the logs from the Wasatch Boulevard Trail have come loose. Uh, doesn't seem very safe to actually use those. So people are now walking around on the side of the trail. So what, what is being done to make sure these trails are properly maintained? Okay, so the question is on trail maintenance in particular, if I'm following the gentleman correctly, trails that are the more native trails, such as the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. Um, and his concern is vegetation growth and shrinking the trails up and um, making it so that it's safe. And then um, I don't believe you mentioned this, but another area of concern that I'm aware of, is, of course, is erosion from spring runoff and that. We do have a trails crew that uh, does maintenance on those trails. Um, we will look at adding that to their list to make sure that vegetation pruning that there is proper clearance in the trails and sandy um, it is something that they work on in the spring and we know that when the leaves um, develop the branches start getting heavier so that's a better time for us to do that maintenance we also do do that with uh, our uh, sandy beautification day sometimes i go back to the old name of out of habit because i've been here for 33 years um, but we do have some trails projects available for that. And then also we do work on National Trails Day where we're trying to get some volunteers out to do some projects um, at that point to uh, help with those projects to take care of those trails. Does that answer your question, sir? 
I turn, yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. okay. Another question online. Another question online. Okay. Can there be more signing in the parks that all dogs should be on a leash? Problem grows this time of year. Also, not enough trash cans at Lone Peak for dog food. Okay, so we work on that. Um, we don't like a lot of signs because we just don't like the sign pollution. But we'll take a look at that to see about. Uh, making sure that the appropriate signs are up. But unfortunately, you can have a sign every 20 feet and people still don't see the signs. Uh, we do have the roll signs. We do have our animal control officers that go out and patrol the parks. They do cite people for that, whether they're on leash and that. And I do have an animal control officer who want to answer some more to that. Uh, thank you. My name is Officer Leslie with Sandy Animal Services. Uh, we do uh, patrol the parks on a on a daily uh, daily routine. Um, we do are we are responding to calls for service uh, throughout the day, and then we do have extra patrols that we patrol the parks. Um, if we do see any violations in the ordinances, we do uh, address them, um, verbal communication. Uh, warnings, and then they can be uh, cited for dogs off leash. Uh, what we would uh, we would love um, for members of the community is if there is a violation happening at that time, uh, call dispatch and let us know because we might be at a neighbor park or we might be at Lone Peak and there might be something going on at Flatiron Park and we might not know about it. Um, so give dispatch a call so they can send out one of our animal control officers and address it um, as it's happening um, to you know curb the curb the issue or, or help resolve or resolve those concerns can you tell them how to call dispatch uh yeah i can give you the phone number we are part of the police department um so the non-emergency uh, phone number is i'll let you get, get a minute to write down the phone number um, but it is posted on the parks um, also near the restrooms uh, but the phone number is 801 seven nine nine three thousand and uh during the summer months we do have officers on till 7 p.m um so please call us and let us know uh, so we can address those maybe concerned areas or concerned parks uh, so we can focus on those uh when we're we're out and about and and responding to calls for service thank you one thing to add to that i think it's important uh, i believe it's still prudent today but Police do like those reports. Uh, even if they're not able there to address it right away or catch the individual, it can show a pattern so that they know to go to this park more often and they know it's at this time that's happening. So it helps them out. Um, let's see if we have any questions in the audience. Gentlemen, go ahead. On the Albert Candy, is how do you how do you build it? I mean, uh, is, is it a boat? Who determines? Who the question is Alta Canyon. How do we build it? Is it a boat? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, that's just one of my questions. I mean, I have so more. But I mean, as far as, uh, and if it's built, how do, how do you, do you go a year without it? Or is it built in stages? Uh, is this a bid? Does it go to the voters? Uh, you know, a number of questions. But, uh, I think I haven't followed uh, the Sandy paper anymore. I mean, occasionally I do. It even took me months to find out she won the election. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot I don't know. I mean, it was the answer, you know. In, in yeah, that, that timeline that's in that webpage answers a lot of those questions. But um, as far as the construction, it's all going to depend upon what um, option we go with. Because you know, if it's tear down the existing building and build a new building in that exact spot, then the center is going to be closed for a while. Um, if it's one of the options where they build the building off to the side, then there's the probability that the center will stay open for most of the construction. But at some point, it'll have to shut down for a little bit. Um, to do some transition um, between the two facilities. So those are all questions that we're trying to tackle right now. 
we got to figure out first if we're even going to do this, which is what the council is trying to address now, because um, that's going to determine a lot of what happens in the future and how it's handled. Well, too, you've got something bidding this particular market. Is it, it would go out to bid. Um, all of our projects go out to bid. We have to go through a procurement process and follow state ordinances and city ordinances for that. Well, I, as far as the bid, as far as what's going on, the shortages and everything, everything's overpriced. And yeah. Uh, and it's and, and that's true. Uh, we still move forward on projects. Yeah, um, maybe when you build it, it'll actually. By the time we get there and get designs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll probably be a year before we uh, actually get to the point where we bid it out um, at the earliest, I would think. And so you, do you have a recent bid on it? What is it? We last bid we had was 2008 and it was uh, 10 million then. Um, it was the smaller than what's proposed in the eight com studies. The eight com estimates around 40 million. Again, that details in that study. It's available on the web page. Another question in the back. Is this work? It should. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. I know that most of your capital expenditures in parks. A lot of it comes from parks fund, from park impact fees. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a list of projects that we can look at? And does the public have any input into your priorities? So, with the park impact fees, um, we are actually in the middle of doing a park impact fee study, and that will have those projects listed in there. Because in order for a project to qualify for park impact fees. It has to be a new project first off, so it can't be rebuilding an existing tennis court. That does not qualify for a park impact fee project. So it have to be a new facility, like a new park, a new rec center, um, things like that. So that study is in the process of going through. It does get approved by city council as we go through that study. And those fees that come from park impact fees come from new development whether it's an apartment complex or a new home being built. And that's so that it provides um, some equity for those people moving in for the new facilities and the new demands it needs, they're paying for that versus the existing residents paying for that. So you have two lists, yeah, one that's two part of the development fee, and then it comes out of the then, then the others were maintenance projects. Does the public have any opportunity to give input on those priorities? Um, they come through in the part of the budget, so that's really the main place that the uh, input's given. Um, I'm always open to hear new projects and what people want and their concerns, but we also, when we're looking at the reconstruction project or the deferred maintenance projects, it's really going on safety concerns, um, you know, is the, one of the main driving factors. Like, we're replacing tennis courts right now because they've got cracks in them that are like three inches wide and that's a safety issue. So that top on the list. So there's not really a public. That's yeah, that's really not a public other than through the budget process. Except for your city council. Okay, thank you. Yeah. One online. So we got one online and then we'll grab this one in the back. <laughs> Maybe they said they had a lot of stock, and I guess they lowered their hand. I'm sorry. The peers, they're no longer there. Is that right? Oh. Yeah, Mayor, Mayor would like to make a comment real quick. Thank you. I know there are a lot of people here interested in Alta Canyon and the funding. I just want to review a couple of the dates that are coming up. As Dan mentioned, tomorrow night, March uh, is. 29th is the preferred scenario. So view the uh, options on the backboards there, view them online. How aggressive do we wanna go with remodel or do we just kind of wanna rework what we have now? So there's a wide range of options presented and that was from our feasibility study that was conducted last year. And the next item of discussion on Alta Canyon will occur April 26th is what should become of the special district the special taxing district. So that's going to be on the council's agenda for April 26th. 
And then the third discussion is May 10th, is how do we fund what our goals are for Elta Canyon? And so all of these items will take a lot of public participation to help the city council get to a good decision. And I'd like to invite Dustin Fratto to explain how to participate at city council meetings. So if you have questions about park projects, park priorities, what you wanna see included with the Elta Canyon Center, your city council members who are here tonight, now we've got uh, fourth, Allison Stroud is here. They wanna hear from you. And so Dustin's gonna explain how to make sure your voice is heard. Thank you, Mayor. Everybody hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can participate in city council meetings in quite a few different ways. Uh, just like you joined this meeting tonight, you can join our council meetings the exact same way. You can participate virtually via Zoom. Uh, you can submit uh, email comments that will go directly to the council members to citizen comment at sandy.utah.gov. Uh, you can also submit e-comments on any council voting items or on any general comment period. Uh, and the link for those is always listed on the council agenda. If you visit our website, uh, go to our agendas, which are on the city council page, you'll see a link that says click here to e-comment on this item. And if you click that and log in, you can submit an e-comment that will also go directly to your council members. Outside of that, the council is always interested in hearing from any of you directly. Feel free to email them. Their emails are all located on our city council website. Uh, feel free to call our office at 801-568-7141 or to email me or any of our staff. And that information is also located on the city council website. And uh, we're happy to pass any of your comments on to the council. Thank you. I can't overstate how eager we are to hear from the people of Sandy about your wishes. This is your rec center. This is your parks department. We are here to serve you. So the decision is going to be made uh, methodically with a lot of public input. And it's going to be a better decision when we have a lot of public participation. So we're hearing some great questions tonight. Thank you. Back to Dan. Okay. I've changed the board just to have the hiring up, but we're still doing questions and we have this uh, young lady in the back. Yeah, um, before I ask my question, um, I just want to say, um, I just want to thank the Parks Department for extending the state park hours. I know that there's a lot of people who use that park that are excited about that. Um, my question is, has the city given any consideration to adding a state park to Sandy? Um, more specifically, maybe to the Canyon Rec Center. Rec Centers and state parks are well together. So first up, she was thinking for the uh, extending the park hours for the skate park at Lone Peak Skate Park. And then her question was, are we considering adding an additional uh, skate park? It is something I know we'd like to add. Um, I looked at a couple of locations. And again, that will go through the public process. Uh, as we go to look at to adding those types of things. Um, if that's something that people will really want to push for out the, out the canyon, please attend those city council meetings. Let the council know that that's something you really want to see, and they can make that decision whether or not to add that in or not. Um, we did look at some options. You know, I know that it was mentioned to do something like wood, woodwork. If I got that right, up in Park City. Um, but then we also talked to some people and they didn't want to pay to get in. Um, so Woodward does cost you some money to get in and because um, it's an indoor year round facility. So uh, we may look at something that's an exterior skate park. I love skate parking. I mean, back in the eighties when I was a teenager, I did it all the time too, <laughs> but we didn't have skate parks. So I won't tell you where I skated. <laughs> um, okay. And then I believe this gentleman had another question. Yeah, that's my question. What is it? Who makes the decision? The council members? The council makes the decision. So we have six council members, seven, including the mayor? No. No, four, four out of seven council members. So they make the final decision on whether you go ahead with it. They look at the budget. Correct. So the council members have the, the power to do that. That's correct. It doesn't go to the local or the city. City council made the budget that goes to the people on the bond. Yeah, and it all depends upon funding sources too. It depends upon what type of bond they go with or, or that. That could play impacts into all of that. 
So is this guy tell you how much it is? <laughs> Cliff is one of those people that helps tell us if we can afford it. Uh, is there any other questions in the audience? Okay, do we have any others online? Okay. Uh, that. We have one more slide I want to share with you guys. We've got the hiring one. I just want to make sure everybody saw that for those of you out in the virtual world. I know we've got QR codes in here for those people that are in here. Um, and this next slide that's coming up is uh, all the different ways that you can reach us. Um, one particular app I would like to push on this page for those of you and if you want to take the flyer, we printed out this page in the back if you don't already have access to this. But I love to see Quick Fix app. Um, you're out in the park, you see an issue, you're out jogging the trail, you see an issue, pull out the app, take a picture, and it goes right to the supervisor that's over that area. So whether it's, um, you know, like I said, a trail issue, a sprinkler head that's broken, you guys are our eyes and ears. Um, graffiti is another big one. So if you've got that opportunity, please use that app. It's, it's really beneficial to us. It really helps our staff out and to find those problems so we can go out and fix them. And then they will email a reply to you. So you'll get a response back on that. Um, if you don't, call me. <laughs> we'll get you taken care of. And uh, that's it for me. And we'll let the mayor have some closing remarks and have a good evening, everyone. So much for your great questions tonight. Thank you to Dan and your team for your wonderful presentation. One thing that's clear, well, you didn't need to come tonight to know that Sandy City is rich with recreation resources and beautiful parks. But the glue that holds it all together is our amazing staff. The Parks Department team, the Recreation team, thank you so much for all you do. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Elsa Canyon, I have to thank the staff at Elsa Canyon. They've been whipping me into shape since I've been mayor. I've been, I went to his class this morning at six o'clock. Um, I hit class, like a circuit class with weights and cardio and then the Zumba class on Saturday mornings, highly recommend. Awesome instructors. People there care. They care about our community. They're not just punching in at a time clock. They, they do what they are doing because they love our community and they want to be part of something really great, creating something great for all of us. Same with the golf course, all of our team. It's just, it's amazing. And it's a real privilege to serve as the mayor, as the leader of the, uh, the employees who deliver these wonderful services. Uh, so it's been stated a couple times tonight, but I'm going to give you a couple action items. Please, if you or someone you know is looking for a summer job, apply. Come and join our team this summer and be part of our grounds crew, of our instructors, of our camps. We need help everywhere we can get. Great resume builder for youth and great experience overall. Uh, so many people in our city started out working at our parks department. Next, please sign up for our Sandy Beautification Projects. There's all kinds of tree planting, flower planting. <laughs> it's a really fun day to spruce up our city. Sometimes they're painting fences. Uh, there's teams up at Bell, Bell Canyon. All quadrants of the city are getting love on Saturday, May 14th. That's the second Saturday in May. So sign up with your group, your family, um, or as I like to voluntold people, <laughs> tell them that they're voluntold to attend. So that's Saturday, May 15th. And then um, River Oaks, get your tea time, get your tea time early and book your summer event there. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to have a party. Um, I wanted to introduce uh, or point out um, Officer Leslie is here and then Officer Jake Olson is our parks police officer. So a few questions about park safety issues or animal services, they're here also. Thank you so much for being here officers. And I noticed the Sandy Police did a really good informative post on social media about things to remember when you're running and jogging outside, safety tips, be aware of your surroundings. How many of us love to exercise with our earbuds? It's not a good idea. Take the earbuds out and be alert to traffic and 
things going on around you, but take a look at the post of the Sandy Police Department this week. They did a great uh, a 10 point, how to stay safe when you're running outside. So again, thanks everybody for being here. And yeah, let's have a great summer. It's a beautiful night out tonight. You still have time to skate, <laughs> to go for a hike or a bike ride. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>